starting now. So we will formally And to do that, uh, welcome and a very good morning to everybody. All of you know our beloved colleagues from University of Malaya, also some other academics, also colleagues as well from other universities, and most definitely to our trainer speaker facilitator today. I will introduce our trainer and speaker today. But first, let me again welcome everybody to our mindfulness to keep calm, be wise, and stay kind. A stress reduction for busy, busy, busy academics. And we're having this mindfulness workshop this morning in celebration of the International Day of Happiness, which occurred on 20th March, just a few days ago, uh, almost a week ago on Saturday. And I think in celebration of that, it's a wonderful thing for us to be able to learn skills that can actually bring us a little bit of joy, a little bit of calm that we can practice for ourselves and hopefully teach to our colleagues as well. And we are so very lucky and fortunate today because to lead our mindfulness practice this morning, we actually have none other than Dr. Yo Karheng, who is the founding chairman of the Malaysia Mindfulness Association. So Dr. Karhang is actually, you know, a pioneer of introducing mindfulness training in the workplace, in educational settings, in organizations. Um, and he's pioneering that actually bringing it into organizations. And he's doing that here, not just in Malaysia, but also in Asia. He's conducted over 100 mindfulness workshops. Um, he's done that for universities like us. He's done it for humanitarian organizations, hospitals, and even global technology companies, including Intel, Dell, Huawei, Deloitte, um, and many, many other organizations. Dr. Karheng, or Dr. Yeo, I should say, is a Search Inside Yourself SIY certified teacher. So SIY is a program that is based, that's formulated on mindfulness and emotional intelligence. And it's actually a curriculum that was developed and tested at Google. So Google employees have actually undergone um, and benefited from the Search Inside Yourself Leadership Program or the SIY. And Dr. Yo Karheng is a certified teacher uh, that's trained by Search and Self Yourself Leadership Institute. So we're very, very lucky because he is coming to us with not just passion and interest, and I know that he cares so very much for academia, but he's also coming to us with a wealth of experience and a wealth of knowledge. And I also know that he's coming with us with his own mindfulness practices. So Dr. Karheng, really, I have to say thank you so much for making this time and sharing your mindfulness practice with us here in University of Laya. And without further ado, I'll pass the screen over to you. Dr. Karheng. Okay, I think there might be a little bit of a tech issue, which tends to happen just as when we're about to start, but that's okay. Uh, I'm sure it will be resolved soon. Oh, great. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Am you right? Yes, we can hear you now. Uh, I think that my connection was not very good. It was just disconnect from the internet, but I was able to use my phone. Uh, wait, let me turn on the video here in the mic here and while waiting for the connection on my desktop. Okay, uh, wait, eh? let, let me try one more time. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that. One more time. One more time. Eh? <clears throat> let me try to uh, log in again using my desktop. Okay, maybe the line is too busy and perhaps uh, uh, Thank you very much for turning on the video just now. Perhaps now we should ask everyone to maybe off your video, okay? Except uh, me and Amira, and then we will see whether the line. Oh, I think it has come back. Okay, wait, uh, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, testing one, two, three. Are you able to hear me now? Okay, I think we always have this uh, technical issue. It's a real test for our mindfulness. Actually, we are having this uh, issue, uh, the connection issue in our class, and many students, you know, and the audience are waiting for us. I, I am glad that now I'm back. <laughs> okay, a very good morning. 
uh, to everyone and thanks uh, Dr. Amira for your very kind introduction. Uh, without further ado, I think uh, we can start. Eh? Uh, we better start our training uh, now, today. Okay, let me uh, take out my slide and then I will share my slide first. Okay, uh, if possible, and you may turn off the video and then when I stop sharing the slide, then maybe uh, you can turn on the video again. Okay, although I very much like to see your face, but sometimes when uh, uh, we have too many, too many cameras on, then the connection is going to be bad. Okay, now I think it's better. <coughs> okay, Amira, can you see the screen now in the slide? Yes. Can you hear me very well? Yes. Okay. yes. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. So today uh, we are going to, as Dr. Amira said, we are going to celebrate this International Day of Happiness. Therefore, we are having this uh, very short, uh, I would say, an introductory uh, mindfulness workshop. The topic which I was given is a very big topic, mindfulness to keep calm, be wise, and stay kind. Okay, and also stress reduction for busy academics. I will stress more on how to keep calm eh, for academics. Of course, when you are calmer, and then you are wiser and kinder as well. Okay. Okay. If anything, uh, Amira, please stop me. You know, if the connection is uh, is is not working, let me know. Okay. So, okay, let me share with you. Um, not long ago, I think. Last semester, I received an email from a student which reads like this. The feelings of emptiness and deep pain return back. I do not know how to handle this again. Doctor, please help me. This student, in fact, I think he suffered from some emotional issue uh, due to his study and also relationship. And uh, I think he is not alone. Especially at this uh, pandemic uh, period, uh, because there are a lot of challenges that we have to cope with. For example, attending online classes and many assignments as well. So, the lack of human connection. Because the student used to stay in the hostel with many friends around, but now many students has to stay maybe you know, with their family and also with uh, and also maybe stay isolated uh, in the hostel. So many students do have this issue like depression, anxiety, and sleeping issue. After pondering for some time, I proposed uh, to the our HTP so that we had a uh, eight weeks uh, mindfulness training. We call it EQ mindfulness soft skill training to our student last semester in USM. Because it was an uh, online training, we opened it for three different campuses. In uh, the main, main campus in Penang, and also we have the, in the medical campus in Kelantan, and also at engineering campus. The response was surprisingly very, I would say, overwhelming and positive. At the end, we have roughly 400 students have completed the course, you know, the EQ mindfulness course, learning emotional skill on how to work with their emotions, how to be more calm and focused. So that is actually very encouraging. And therefore, I'm here to share with you, I would say one of the small achievements that we have done in, in USM in helping our students. Besides students, I believe as an academic, you and me also very stressed, especially at uh, this uh, COVID-19 time because we have to learn new skills like how to conduct an online exams, online class, and also at the same time, we have to chase our KPI for publications. You know, I, I, I believe UM have a uh, higher mm, higher what we call standard, <laughs> maybe more people have to publish per year, although we also have the same challenge as well in, in USM, but I was told by many of my colleagues in UM, many academics are 
very stressed as well. Sometimes have to struggle with emotional issues like uh, depression, mental health issue, and maybe difficulties in uh, have a, having a good sleep. I think these are the common challenge that we have for working adults, not only as academics, but academics do have a lot of challenges, you know, stress from work and also relationship, maybe with the colleagues or maybe with the families. This all you know, giving a lot of different challenges to us. And lastly, when we are getting older, like now I'm also above 40 now, having some knee pain, maybe cholesterol level is high, blood pressure is high. So the challenges also come from uh, our health issue as well. So when we need to cope with these different types of challenges, you know, from work, from relationship, maybe our own medical issue, so it does actually giving us a lot of stress and it has a big impact on our mental health and also physical health. When we have to cope with this, but we do not have a proper skill on how to work with our stress, then, you know, definitely we are not going to be happy because this will make us very, very stressful and unhappy. So the other challenges that we have, the scientists told us we spend about 50% of our time in mind rendering. As in the new uh, age now, we have to cope with a lot of device like mobile device, replying WhatsApp message, especially to our students. Now we are having online class, we do receive, you know, WhatsApp text, uh, maybe day and night, answering question, you know, uh, USM have just started our new semester uh, this week and students have problem with their registration, we have their class, uh, with their schedule in class, then we have to reply to them. So it's even more busy compared to face-to-face -face class. It's, these are the common challenges that we do have. So, and uh, scientists told us there is a network in our brain called the default mode network. Even though when we are at the resting uh, state, our mind or our brain is still very active and busy. Okay, so mind wandering is one of the signs. The other one is like we have a restless thought. And the same group of scientists from Harvard, Harvard also tell us when we have this uh, wandering mind, we are not going to be happy because a wandering mind is not a happy mind. So I think the purpose of our training today is to learn how to stop mind wandering. Okay? We need some skill okay? uh, and then to switch from the default mode network to what we call to attention network, yeah? to be more able to be at the present moment. And that is the purpose of a training. Therefore, if we can come back to the present moment and we learn the skill and have the tools to do that, that is what we call uh, mindfulness state. Okay, so this is what we are going to learn. I'm not going to share with you a lot of theory, but what is more important, I'm going to share with you some very basic and simple mindfulness technique that could help us to stay calm. And then and work with our emotion. That is the purpose of our very short training today. So the new norm, you know, besides the COVID nineteen new norm norm that we have to stick with the SOP, the new norm or the new challenge that we have, you know, for modern time people is our attention is always in the past or future. Although we try, you know, to focus to do our work at the present moment to read a book or to write a paper, our mind is keep on, you know, uh, getting distracted, you know, attention, sometimes worry about, regret about something that we have done in the past or worry about what is going to happen in futures. Okay, the, this is uh, what we call a sign of default mode network, mind wandering. Okay, and then get distracted, restless as well. So we call it a new norm. So this is like a strong, very strong current in the river that we almost cannot stop them. 
So to be able and then how to change this, we have to go against the current. And go, go against the current means we have to develop the inner strength so that in our mind or our brain so that we can go against the current. Okay, so what to do? And in fact, you know, this is what we are going to do today to build our inner strength so that we have the ability, we have the skill you know, on how to stay present, how to be more calm and more stable. And the tools that we are going to use today is mindfulness. So I'm going to introduce a little bit, you know, what is uh, mindfulness and share with you some basic uh, technique or skill on how to practice mindfulness. Okay. And the purpose of it, you know, besides to stay calm, you know, we can also use mindfulness to develop what we call our emotional intelligence. Mindfulness is a tool that we can use to increase our self-awareness, including emotional awareness. When we experience, for example, stress, you know, anxiety, we are aware of it. This is one thing. This is the first step to be able to aware of our emotion. Second, after we are aware of it, then how to work with the emotion. This is what we call self-management skill. Okay. So after that, this is self-awareness and self-management is very much on our own, okay? Intra-personal relationship. How to be friends with our emotion, how to know better on our emotion. This is, this is about our own. And then the next step will be our relationship with other. Inter-personal relationship. We call it social awareness. Or sometimes we can call it empathy to be able to aware of other people emotions and feeling as well so when we are able to connect with other better then we are kinder not only to ourselves and also to the other the last one is relationship management how to manage you know working relationship or family relationship and also how to create a positive impact on other people life for example, we are lecturers, isn't it? Sometimes our job is not only to share the knowledge or technical knowledge with our students. Many times we can also set a very good role, role, role model to our students. So by doing that, we are actually exhibiting our leader, what we call leadership skill as well. That will be on relationship management. Although to be able to cover all these topic names, at least we did two days because these are the content of the Search Inside Yourself SIY uh, training and I'm uh, teaching now. But because today we only have two hours, so I will focus more on self-awareness and self-management. How to use mindfulness as a tool to increase our self-awareness and self-management so that we can keep track of our wandering mind and come back to the present moment to be more focused and calm. This is the first thing. Second thing, when we experience uh, ex what we call emotional trigger, when we feel stressed, anxious, what could we do? Okay, so this is the second objective that we are trying to achieve uh, today, this morning. So how? How can actually we achieve that? You know, to be more present. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is to switch from autopilot to aware. Sometimes the wandering mind is like autopilot, you know, even though you want to stay calm, but the mind is still working non-stop, especially when we try to sleep at night and you can't help but to think about your job tomorrow, think about your paper, think about your research, isn't it? So, and then if we, there is no, this is what we call autopilot mode, okay? It's like the mind or the brain working on its own. Uh, that is what we call the default mode network being very activated. Okay, so to be able to stop that, you know, the wandering mind, then we need we need to bring the attention back to the present moment so that it can stay more focused. But the first step we need to do is to be able to aware that our mind has wandered. Is it? 
So to switch from autopilot to aware, and this is what we are trying to achieve. So the tool that we are using is called mindfulness. In Malay, it's called Minda Ketara Seda. So Ketara, as we know, this is a new, actually new vocabulary created by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by IKIM, Institute Kefaham, Kefahaman Islamic Malaysia. I, I think a number of years ago, I also went there to conduct mindfulness training for them. They are very much aware of this uh, mindfulness as well. So they created this Malay word, Minda mean the mind, Ketara, as everyone knows, means apparently. Isn't it? Ketara. When, for example, when I have a, 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 what we call a different color on my shirt, red color, this red color becomes very apparent. Isn't it? That is called Ketara. Not separa, but Ketara. Seda so means aware. So mindfulness basically can mean we are fully aware of what is happening in our mind and body at the present moment. If you read Chinese, I know many of you do not read Chinese here, here but I, I also share with you the Chinese character for mindfulness, which is very meaningful. Let me share with you. Eh? The first character above, eh, we pronounce Jing. Jing means now, the present. Okay? And then the bottom word is what we call, we pronounce Sing. Sing means the heart or hati. Okay? So, what mindfulness means is the present moment awareness. Yeah. The opposite of absent mindedness. Many times we are absent minded when we, for example, when we are having me a, a meal, a lunch. And then our mind keep on wondering. After we finish the whole plate of uh, rice or, or, or meal, we cannot remember what we have actually eaten. <laughs> that is the norm. And when we walk, you know, on the street or, or maybe sit down, trying to rest, our mind hardly stay at the present moment because the mind wandering, as we say, is a is like a norm to us. Okay, so mindfulness is to learn how to come back to the present moment. That is the most basic, what we call understanding or principle of mindfulness. And how to do that, later I'm going to share with you how to do that. Okay, so the first part of mindfulness, you can also call it an attention training to be able to aware of what is taking place in our body, our mind, and also sometimes including our surrounding. For example, when we want to cross a street, isn't it? If you're not, your mind is not at the present moment, you are thinking somewhere, you may be knocked down by the car, isn't it? Therefore, we need mindfulness as well on whatever thing that we do. For example, like listening to uh, the training today, you need to stay focused as well. If not, very quickly, your mind will start to get wonder. Think about your work, think about your lectures, think about other things. And then you are not present. So that time is called absent-mindedness. You, know, you, you become absent-minded. Okay? To be able to aware that our mind has wandered, okay? that is called awareness or attention. You can also call it mindfulness. So the first step of mindfulness is to train us to be able to pay attention to what is happening and what is taking place at the present moment. Okay, so this is the first step that we want to learn. Or this is the, you can say, a major component in mindfulness training. Second, will be mindfulness also have the other very important part is what we call attitude. Or sometimes we call it right attitude. For example, when we experience a lot of stress it will create a lot of tension to our body and also the mental state become, becomes very sometimes it can be become very restless a lot of thoughts or when you experience certain emotion like sadness anxiety and so on these are the what we call the emotions that we can felt at the present moment Although, you know, you, sometimes you could be very aware of it as well. But to be able to aware of it is not enough. Because why? What we need to train is how to aware of it. How to, uh, how to pay attention to our emotion. So in mindfulness, we are going to develop this attitude. We call it kindness and curiosity. 
this will change our relationship with our emotion and stress. Many times when we when we experience certain emotions like fear, anxiety, or stress, what we want, what we try to do is to push them away. We don't want to look at them. If you do so, you know, but we cannot do so. The more that you try to suppress your feeling, you know, try to fight with your feeling, you are fighting with yourself because there is no way that you can escape the feelings and emotion arise in yourself, you know, due to certain conditions. So what we need to do in mindfulness training, we are aware that this stress and emotion, they arise due to certain conditions. This is first thing, we accept that. For example, like maybe tomorrow you need to give a very, very important presentation, okay, in a big conference. And tonight, you, uh, you can't help but to think about that uh, conference, your talk, and you start to get very nervous and tense. Okay, so due to this condition, that emotion arise. So in mindfulness, what we do, we try to train ourselves to have an open mind, you know, and and acknowledge that due to this condition that I'm, I am experiencing this emotion, and that which is very natural. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so we train, uh, this is what we call self-awareness. Second, we train how to feel our emotion in our body. Later, I will explain it a bit, okay, because emotion express themselves in our body. For example, when you feel stressed, when you feel nervous, you can see that your breathing, you know, uh, the rate of your breath will become very rapid, okay, and then you will feel uneasiness or unpleasantness in your heart area. These are all, we call it symptoms, just like we are having what we call a uh, cold and then you have fever as the symptoms. So when we experience certain emotion, this emotion actually also express themselves in our body. As a scientist, it's not too difficult for us to understand because we know that each and every emotion is a biochemical reaction. The change of hormones like cortisol levels and also maybe you can say that the neurotransmitter although i'm not a neuroscientist or medical doctors but these are the common uh, knowledge that everyone has isn't it so you can see that when we experience certain emotions there are a lot of physiological changes that has been taking place in our body as well so how to actually be aware of our emotion and look at our emotion with the correct attitude. Uh, uh, the correct attitude, we call it kindness and curiosity. This is also a major part of uh, mindfulness training. So mindfulness training has been used as a antidote or what we call a therapeutic uh, intervention uh, for many uh, what we call mental disorder like stress, depression and so on. Although today we, we are not going to touch on that. That will be... Uh, theoretical side, isn't it? But I just want you to aware, you know, there are two parts of mindfulness, two major components of mindfulness. One is what we call attention training, to train ourselves to be able to stay at the present moment so that we do not drag by our emotion or thought going to the past and future. To train the stability of mind. This is the first uh, important part of mindfulness. Second is when we are aware of our thoughts and emotion, how to look at them, okay? And this is what we are going to train, is cultivating what we call the mindful attitude or right attitude, look at our emotion, okay? So this will be the, uh, what we call, you can say that the definition of mindfulness, eh? to be able to aware of what is going on in our body, mind, especially, with an attitude of kindness and curiosity and uh, that is the full definition of mindfulness okay so coming back for attention training what do we need to train yeah is our attention what do you what do we mean by attention so now everyone please pay attention to this remote control here so when I say pay attention, you see you will direct your mind or your attention to this direction. That is what we call attention. 
That is the first thing that we are going to learn, which means in mindfulness training, we are going to use, for example, our breath and our body sensation as the object of our attention. Later, I'm going to explain why we want to use that, okay, the object. Second part of attention training is what we call meta attention. Meta attention is the attention of attention. That means the ability to know your mind has wandered. Many times when our mind has wandered, but we also did not notice that. Okay, so we keep on lacking our mind or attention or the thoughts. We just follow the train of thought. Sometimes we go to Pasamalam, sometimes we go to America. It's almost like cannot stop. Okay, so to be able to aware that our mind has wandered is called meta attention. This is also important component in mindfulness training. And this is the first step of our training. Okay, so nothing mystical about mindfulness because we need, we need to train you know, the ability of our brain to pay attention and to be aware of our mind has wandered. Okay, later I will share with you a little bit knowledge on neuroscience. Okay, this is very much like we are going to the gym to do the workout. Okay, if you do not go to the gym and therefore you muscle like me, no muscle, eh? because they do not go, go to train at the gym. So if you want to have a, a better shape of a body, then you have to go to train your body. So the same thing applies to mental training. If you want to have a more healthy mind, you know, to be able to stay more focused and more uh, work with your emotion more skillfully, then we have to train our mind. Eh? We call it, therefore, we call it a mental training or mind training. So after sharing with you a, a little bit of the theory, so better now we do some exercise. Eh? Because talking a lot is not very useful, although it's important for us to understand on what uh, we are doing. Okay, but more importantly is put it, you know, and, and put it uh, what we call uh, to do the practice so that we can truly uh, uh, gain the benefits from mindfulness training. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is called awareness. Eh? Body awareness. Why do we use our body as an uh, object of our attention? Because when, wherever you go or whenever you go, your body go with you. Isn't it? Eh? Sometimes we call it, this is what we are trying to do to, uh, to stay in our body. Put in simple words. Eh? Many times we are not with our body because we live in our brain. Isn't it? So, body is a very good anchor for us to return back to the present moment because the body is ever present. Isn't it? The mind could be somewhere, the mind could be thinking about the past and future, but the body, our physical body, is ever present. Which means the body can serve as a very good anchor. And eh? just like uh, a ship uh, wants to stop in the middle of an ocean. He has to throw the anchor, isn't it? So that the ship can stop. So if you want your mind to be able to stop, <laughs> let's uh, you know, put in a simple language, to stop your mind from wandering, you need to have an anchor or object for its attention. Yeah. So therefore, we use our body as our object of, uh, you can pay focus. So this guy, John uh, Sheehan, saying that the mind, first step to self-awareness must be through the body. So the body is very, very important to us. But many times we just ignore and forget our body. So mindfulness is to help us to, to come back to our body, yeah? put in simple terms. So the first technique I'm going to share with you is called the anchor of now. Using our soul, uh, Malay called tapakaki, you know, as the object of our attention. Because whenever we go, we go with our legs, isn't it? Eh? Even though when we are sitting here, you can also feel your feet and your soul. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to share with you now. Now everyone, please 
place your feet or your sole flat on the ground. And then bringing your attention to feel your sole touching the floor. Be aware of the touching sensation and the weight of your both leg and your soul. Okay, this is what we call pay attention because you are listening to my guidance or instruction. So I direct your attention go eh, uh, to 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 your soul. You see, so when when you listen to my instruction and you place your attention there, your attention is there. Okay, your attention is not in other place, but your attention is at the present moment because your soul or your body is at the present moment. So this is simple principle, isn't it? So this is the first step. We call it paying attention to your soul or topakaki. Okay, I'm going to explain more. Second is what we call body awareness. Now I want you to pay attention to your body. You may close your eyes. Okay, now listen to my instruction. I'm going to guide you through this uh, body awareness practice. Okay. Put your, uh, your palm or your hands on your lap. Okay? And then you may slowly close your eyes and bringing your attention to your soul. Right soul, left soul. Tafakaki, eh? Feeling it. And then bring your attention to your whole body. Feeling yourself. Sit on the chair, feeling your buttock on the chair. Aware of the weight of the body. Aware of the posture of the body. Bring your attention to feel your body. Aware of the temperatures of a body, the warmness in your body. Aware of the temperatures on your skin, the skin coming to contact with the air in the surrounding. Aware of the temperatures on the surface of your skin. Aware of your hands are touching your legs. Feeling the touching sensation. Remember your tapakaki, your soul on the ground a top come into contact with the chair that you are sitting and of the weight of the body the temperatures of the whole body touching point including your lips are touching each other your eyes lips are touching each other warmness on your both ears Ask yourself, are you still aware of the body of your mind has or your mind has wandered somewhere? That's what that is fine if you think of other things. Aware of it and bring your attention back to your body. Feeling your whole body.
Tu vai ao pessoal, a ti me clão. Vá top on the chain. The posture of the body, the sitting posture. The upper body is sit sitting upright. Shoulder relax. To wear the warmness of the body. To wear the temperatures on the surface of the skin. Well, the facial expression. See whether your forehead is relaxed or not. You may give a half smile to yourself. Well, the facial expression. Feel your whole body. We are using our body as an anchor of now. Feel your whole body, the sitting posture, your upper body, your lower body, your hands, your legs. The soul, fingers, toes, just bring your attention to feel the whole body. Okay, you may expand your attention to aware of the sound in the surrounding. Any sound. Then slowly open your eye. When you open your eyes, be aware of what you see, the color and shape. You know, any object is fine. Just bring your attention back to this present moment. I will stop sharing the slide now and I would like to hear to see any one of you have any uh, what we call question or any sharing you would like to make regarding this uh, body awareness practice. Can I invite someone or any volunteer like to share your experience on the very short practice on body awareness. Any volunteers or oh, everyone is very shy because uh, your camera is off. Or maybe I should encourage everyone to turn on or, or at least someone, uh, some of you to turn on your video. <laughs> okay, can I have this uh, Vishala? Uh, how, to, uh, is it, how to pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Morning, yeah. uh, I can call you Visha. Visha, yeah. Visha, do you mind sharing with us your experience on the very short practice? Yeah, I, I, I've yeah, been so I, happy I, I, today morning. I think there's echo. Can you... oh, there's an echo, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You hear my uh, echo or echo coming um, from your side? Uh, the U. Uh, do you have another yes. device open? Can you yes, I have my, uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe I should turn off this. Uh, my my. Yeah, mobile. thank you. It's, it's a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but it's a very soft echo. I I, I I I did hear myself speaking just now. I hope it's not too disturbing to you. But never mind. Uh, Risha, uh, maybe you could uh, say. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The first thing I felt was. I felt was. I forgot everything I forgot when I was doing that exercise. <laughs> that exercise. 
You mean you forgot, you didn't forget your body, isn't it? But you forgot about your work for that. Yes, yes. I was, I was just going towards my body, but everything else, my stress, my everything, all gone. So that was great for that moment. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's great. You see, you see, a lot of time our stress come from thinking. If you think about your work, you know, you have a lot of things to do with it, then you start to feel stress. So therefore, as I said, you know, this is what we call the default mode network, especially something that is regarding or related to yourself. Okay, so our default mode network will become very active because it's always think about what is going to happen if I didn't do that? What is going to happen if, you know, this is all, uh, put in simple word, this is default mode network in working. So, therefore, it creates a lot of stress to us. It's not to say that we don't want to accomplish the job, but many times the thinking, overthinking is not very useful. If we can focus, or sometimes we call it one time, one business, we do this, and we complete it and we do the second thing in it but at one time you think of 10 things to do then you will feel very stressed if you have 10 things to do but you just focus on one thing at one time uh, that is fine isn't it so like just now we spend a few minutes doing this body awareness practice we are training our mind or attention to have the ability to connect with ourselves you can say to connect with our body, to connect with our self, or actually to connect with the present moment. Okay, so th this is many times if we do not train, we do not train our mind to do so, we will not be able to do so because mind wandering is a norm. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. Okay, is there any other person like to share your experience? Uh, your ex experience regarding the short practice tamara do you mind to share with us tamara yeah hello good morning to everybody i wanted to say that in spite of this experience being very short i still have some thoughts coming up of things that i'm supposed to do today so i think that's very important this for uh, being able to come back to the present moment so I think that this ability to put your mind back uh, so that you can be concentrated again on what you are doing is probably the key, I guess, because I find that, at least my mind, it's common for the mind to wander everywhere. So just taking it back, you know, the awareness of yes. the body, the present moment, the breathing. So I think that it really helps. Thank you so much, Tamara, for sharing. The purpose of our training is not to stop the mind from thinking or stop the thoughts from arising. That is impossible. Okay, let's make it clear that our purpose of mindfulness training is not to stop our mind from thinking because that is impossible. Our mind will wonder anyhow because, as I said, this is the default mode okay this is the default mode that we are almost like created to to think that way okay so what we need to do is to be able to aware that the mind has wandered that is called meta attention that is the very important parts of mindfulness training isn't it but to be able to do so to know that the mind has wandered we need to create an object of attention we need to give the mind a, an object of attention so that it has a reference point to know that the mind has wandered okay right the mind has wandered we know that and we're coming back to our soul or to our body therefore the body our body is the object of our attention that we use to uh to to be able to what we call to let the mind to come home okay so the principle is actually very, very simple, but it requires a lot of practice. Okay, because if we do not train that, our mind will just go back to, to what we call to behave like very wow, you know, think of this, think of that. Okay, so very good. And in fact, just now we use the whole body as our attention. It's not very difficult, isn't it? You no need to focus very hard. 
For example, now you are talking to me, okay? You are listening to me with, with, uh, with open eyes. Can you feel your body now? Are you able to feel your whole body while listening to me? I believe you can, isn't it? That is why I always encourage my students to do, uh, you know, when they are attending a lecture. Okay? You can still feel, you can put certain portion of your attention to your whole body and then listen to the lecture so that you make sure your mind is at the present moment. So we can always use our body as an anchor for us to return to the present moment. So our body is actually very useful. Okay, any other question or sharing? Amira, do you like to share or uh, any question? Yes, um, actually yes, I want um, to just read out. There is a question here. Oh, okay, please, yes. Uh, what is the frequency or duration? We need to practice this. Okay, I, I see the question now. It helped me focus, but my mind was racing everywhere. As I said, that is norm, okay? To be able to aware that your mind is racing everywhere, that is called self-awareness, okay? So we do not judge or we do not, uh, uh, yeah, we do not judge our mind from racing here and there because this is what the mind does. Therefore, we need to cultivate, we call it openness of mind and kindness. You know, to allow, to know that the mind is just like a monkey. Sometimes we call it a monkey mind. The nature of a monkey is jumping from one tree to the other tree, isn't it? So the nature of our mind is to be wonder here and there. So this is what the mind do, okay? So we just have to simply aware of that. And then after we are aware of that and we come, we bring it, our attention back again to our body. Okay, so that is our training. I give you an example. When we are able to aware that the mind has wandered, aware of it, eh, and then we reorientate our attention back to our body, that is similar to we are doing a, a workout uh, from the gym. We train our mental muscle to do that. In fact, I'm going to share with you the part of the brain that we are able to, to notice that our mind has wandered is called ACC, uh, anterior singular cortex. If you are neuroscientist, maybe my pronunciation is not very accurate, but that is what the part of the brain do. Okay? The more that we are able to know, notice our brain, our mind has wandered, okay, and bring it back, or we sometimes we call it reoriented it back. Therefore, we are training our mental ability and mental functions of we call it attention regulation. That is part of our training. Therefore, that we do not try to stop thinking. Okay? I want to repeat one more time because a lot of people have a misunderstanding to say that, oh, it's not good. My mind is racing here and there. I want it to stop. <laughs> no, you know, this is not what we are trying to do. What we do is to know that the mind has wandered, the mind has racing here and there. We notice that and kindly and gently bring it back again to our body awareness and the breath okay this first thing anyhow how frequent or duration do we need to practice this body awareness for it to become effective at least i would say eh, five minutes per day at least at least five minutes per day and don't try to be too greedy okay uh, you can break it to different uh, you can practice like five minutes in the morning five minutes after lunch and five minutes before you sleep and then after you collect together it becomes 15 minutes isn't it for example i always share with my my what we call my student yeah, in my class this morning i have an 8 a.m class teaching bioanalysis before my organic class i also teach organic chemistry and and this class i have like about 80 sometimes 160 150 students. I always start my lectures with a few minutes of mindfulness practice. So that, you know, once you practice it, then, then you are able to stay more focused. So three to five minutes is good to start with. Okay? No need, no need. If you are too ambitious, you know, I want to try 15 minutes or half an hour, you, you wouldn't stay 
too long, you know, because mindfulness practice is like a marathon. Okay, you have to preserve your energy to keep your mind uh, to be interested on doing so, to be curious on doing so. Okay, so pick it up slowly. Okay, very kind of Amira to text it up, you know, and curious singular context. Yes, practice at least five minutes a day. Okay, should we continue? Okay, let's continue. And then we still have, uh, this is the first, uh, what we call, first technique I'm going to share with you, body awareness. And then we are going to continue. Oh, sorry, eh? let me go into this. Okay, can you see? Uh, now I don't have my mobile device on. What I can see is just a screen. <laughs> so if anything happens, please stop me, Amira. Okay, so body awareness. Uh, okay, we are going through that. So this is a basic concept of neuroplasticity. That means we can train our brain for certain function. Okay, to be to become better at certain certain function like paying attention. The more that we train this function of the brain, not only we can improve the function, but we can also observe a minor structure change in our brain, especially on the cortical thickness level. So I know many of you maybe is a medical doctor or neuroscientist. Uh, you may know this concept very well, but I, I would like to share it again you know, with some other colleagues who might not be very familiar with this concept. So let's have a look. This is what happened in mind wandering. Eh? Put in simple terms, eh? many parts of our brain are activated. Okay? You can see this color one, eh? it shows that these parts are activated. So this is what we call mind wandering. When you are aware of mind wandering, uh, this is ACC into real singular cortex. Eh? This part of the brain is important for distraction awareness. Okay, aware of it. Once we are aware the mind has wandered and then we reorientate our attention. This is done by prefrontal cortex. Okay, after that, we direct our attention to the breath or to the body. So this is what we did, you know, just now when we pay attention to our body. We are using our body as an object of attention Okay, let's say we will pay attention to our body of the breath, the prefrontal cortex is working. Okay, paying attention to the breath or pay attention to the body. And next, the mind starts to wonder. Okay, this is like this. So when you start to wonder, different part of the brain is activated. What is next? We are aware that the mind has wondered. That is called meta attention or distraction awareness. When we are aware of it, uh, this is ACC in working. Okay, this is good because when when whenever we are able to aware that the mind has wandered, we are training our ACC. Okay, after that we know the mind has wandered. This is called meta attention, and we reorientate the attention back to the breath or to the body. So this is reorientation of attention. This is done by prefrontal cortex. Again, the prefrontal cortex also have the functions of sustain attention. Okay, sustaining attention. So this is therefore we call it uh, attention training. Uh, the more that you train, and then I'm going to show with you, uh, show to you. There are some research here. You can call the practice attention training or meditation. Many times I do not like to use the word meditation because people may have different understanding on meditation but what we do is called mindfulness practice or you can call it mindfulness meditation meditation here means attention training or mental training okay so this area Brockman area 10 eh, put in simple word we can call it prefrontal cortex this is part of the prefrontal cortex what the prefrontal cortex do is for as i said just now reorientation of attention or regulation of attention and Sustain attention. Prefrontal cortex is also important for decision making, rational thinking, and so on. Okay, let's look at the right uh, graph here. The blue color one is the meditation group. 
Red color one is a control group. Okay, so normally when we get older, our cortical thickness on the prefrontal cortex will will become less. Uh, what we call become thinner. Okay, as you can see. Okay. However, when you practice mindfulness, you are able to counteract this. Okay, the cortical thickness of prefrontal cortex in the meditation group relatively is thicker than the control group. This is become very obvious, especially when we go older, you see, after 35 uh, of age, isn't it? Uh, so this is very, which means when you practice mindfulness more, maybe you can stay, you, you will stay more alert <laughs> uh, when you get old, okay? This is one thing, okay? Second thing, uh, second part of the brain is called insula. Insula is important for body awareness. So when we did the practices now on body awareness, that is the part of the brain that we are actually activating, uh, insula, because insula is important for body awareness. For example, you know that you are sitting here. Okay, that is this is called body awareness. When you stand up, how do you know that you are you stand up uh, when, when we are standing and when we are sitting? How do we know that the posture of the body is different? And uh, that is body awareness that is done by insula okay so when we practice mindfulness more in fact we also train our insula the function of the insula for body awareness and also for emotional awareness later we are going to learn that emotion actually expressed in our body so when you have a higher degree of body awareness which also means you have a higher degree of emotional awareness and that is very useful Insula is the same part of the brain when we, what we call, develop empathy. To be able to feel the emotion and feelings of others. That is also done by insula. Okay? So when we train in mindfulness, not only you are aware of your own emotion, at the same time, you become more aware of other people's feelings and emotions. That is what we call empathy. Therefore, not only you become calmer, you become kinder. To other people that is the main topic of our uh, topic uh, what we call our workshop today isn't it as you can see this is the meditation group uh, the meditation participant have a higher cortical cortical thickness in insula compared to the control group as well so therefore there are a lot of benefits in mindfulness training uh, especially in western country like in uk they are promoting mindfulness in the national level. Okay, in the national level means they're introducing mindfulness to school, they train the school teachers, and then they train uh, doctors, medical doctors on mindfulness. And also they're bringing mindfulness training to corporate organization because this area are uh, in which, you know, people experience a lot of stress and challenges. Isn't it? So, that is very important. Therefore, uh, I should stop here. Uh, maybe, no, I should continue. Later, we will do one more practice. If you have any question, then you may ask later. Okay, so now this is the, you, if you like to say, this is the science behind our training. Okay, so what we do, uh, therefore, the reason why mindfulness becomes so popular because there are a lot of research has been carried out in this area. One part of it is neuroscience and also social science as well. You know, you can increase, for example, the happiness level eh, in, uh, in yourself uh, when you practice mindfulness. Okay, these are the benefits of mindfulness. Oh, okay. So second part of our training, beside the body, we can also use our breath as an anchor of now. Of course, the breath also in our body. Okay, body is a uh, is like a, a bigger object. Breath is a uh, is become you can become if you like to say become more focused. You know when you pay attention to the breath. Sometimes we need to use both, like a camera lens. Eh? We call it zooming in and zooming out. Okay, so we can use our body and breath, or we can we can actually change from body and breath. Okay, switch switching from each other to train our attention. So now I'm going to guide you through you know, breath awareness. 
but the foundation is body awareness. Let's do the practice one more time. Okay. Okay. Now I would like to invite everyone again to put your palms on your laps. If you like, you may close your eyes. Bring your attention to your whole body. The first step is checking your bodily posture. Make sure your spine is upright. Shoulder relax. And the feet in front of you. Feeling your soul touching the ground. Feeling your whole body sitting on the chair. Aware of different touching sensation. Arms on your lap. But top on the chair. Aware of whole body. Your head. Your facial skin. Your both ears. Your neck. Relax your shoulders. Aware of your whole upper body. Aware of your both legs. So, this is what we call body awareness using our body as an anchor for us to return to the present moment. And then be curious. Asking yourself a question. Am I taking an in-breath now? Or am I taking an out-breath now? Simply, simply be aware of the process of breathing. We do not try to control the breath. Just breathe naturally. But we simply be aware of the process of breathing. If your mind wanders, bring it back, bring it back to your body and breath. Remember your body. Remember your breath.
check the state of your mind. Are you feeling fully alert at the same time? The mind is there, relaxed, body is relaxed. Or you are feeling, feeling a little bit sleepy now. That is also fine. Check the state of your attention. Again, bring your attention to the whole body. Feeling the breath. Extend your attention to hear the sound in the surrounding. Sound is also only taking place at the present moment. What I mean is hearing. So by paying attention to what you hear, it's actually another way to anchor our attention to the present moment. Okay, now you may open your eyes and put your palm together and you put your hands together and you feel the, the touching sensation of a both hand, the warmness of a hand and maybe a little bit, you know, the stress that you put upon your each palm. That is what we call body awareness. And then rub your hand, rub your hand. Okay, make it warm and then put your hands on your face. Let the warmness of your hands slowly transmit or transfer to your face, your eyes. Okay, and rub your hand again, rub your hand again, make it warm. Okay, and then like washing your face, like in the morning, but now it's without water. Okay, pulling your ears up and down, pulling your ears up and down, and then giving yourself a massage on your shoulders. Okay, this. Let me stop sharing the screen. Okay, how do you feel at the moment? <laughs> this is our second practice. Eh? Uh, what we call combining body and breath awareness. Okay. Anyone like to share your experience or any question? Are you still with me now? <laughs> because I don't see anyone <laughs> feeling better. Question. Any question? With, yeah. Any question or any sharing? Maybe could I ask uh, someone to share? Nosha, Noshafika? Dr. Noshafika, are you there? Is it Noshafika? Or maybe... Oh. Yeah, I think some may not have phones and... Um, oh. So, um, may I No problem, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Or, or maybe is there any volunteer like to share your experience or ask any question? How do you feel regarding the practice just now? If I may share. Yeah, please. Yeah. I actually find it difficult to keep completely still. So when I do this practice, I actually move. I think of my like a little grass or a leaf. So I'm in the the breeze. And so while I'm being aware of myself, I sway. I sway. And that helps me to be. Aware and calm. Aware and calm. 
okay, okay. In fact, we do not need to keep entirely still when we practice mindfulness. There is another practice I may share with you. It's called the hand movement practice. Sometimes, some people find it difficult to pay attention to the breath because they tend to focus and they, be, they become tense. Okay? So if that is the case, what you can do, you can also practice what we call, sometimes I call it dynamic mindfulness, dynamic med mindfulness or dynamic meditation. If I might show you here, I'm not sure whether you can see, okay? I, I, maybe I should push over it a bit, okay? If you can train, eh? okay, now you can see. You can see, just not need to look at my face, can here, Dr. Amira, are due to echo. Okay, can you see my, my hand now on my left today? So what you can do, now I'm going to share with you what we call dynamic meditation. Okay, so you put your hands here. After that, if everyone can follow me and then do, we do it together, you flip your hand. You, wait, let me, okay, we, okay, can you see? You flip your hand. And then you bring your hand up. Okay, and then left hand, flip your hand and bring your hand up to this level. And then push it forward, open it and put it down. This is one cycle. I do it one more time. Okay, flip your hand. When you flip your hand, you are aware of the movement, fully aware of the movement. Okay. And then you bring your hand up, you are aware of this movement of the hand, touching your, your chest. And then flip your hand again, bring it up. Okay, push it up this way, put it down. Okay, this is like, this is what, this is like people playing Tai Chi. Eh? This is what we call the aware of body movement. Okay? The aware of body movement. Which means you can bring your attention to this movement. Because it's dynamic. Okay? It's not so boring. Many times when people practice mindfulness, uh, if they are too tired, they will fall asleep. Okay? Because the breath is very subtle and they feel very calm and then they start to nodding. Which is fine, but the other way is using you know, the movement. To become the object of our attention which means we can also practice mindful walking when you walk in the garden be aware of the whole body and you take each and every step make sure there is no uh, danger around you and then you bring attention to the whole body therefore you are doing mindful walking right? or even in our daily activity when we want to take shower or cooking for your kids the time you can bring your attention to your movement, okay, uh, your body movement, be aware that you are standing there, be aware that you are walking, and that, that will be more, I would say, at once training, because our time is very short. So I just share with you one or two very simple practice, okay, but you can do so, and you know, be aware of your movement on whatever activity that you do. That is also a very important form of mindfulness training. Okay, that I see one skill for breathing. I use my yoga skill. When I inhale my perut kembung, when I exhale my perut kecut, <laughs> there is also my stomach exercise. Keep me very focused, can chuba. Uh, yes, that is also uh, a form of what we call it, uh, 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 breathing. That is that will be breathing exercise. Okay, so, but in my goodness, we do not try to control the breath. Okay, but in yoga, maybe it's a different set of theory okay in mindfulness we just keep natural breathing okay so we take the object the breath as our object of our attention so that you can stay more focused okay when i really stress when i'm when i'm really restless mindful walking really helps right tamara share yes true right when you feel very restless you should stop you no know, from whatever thing that you do go for a walk when you walk a tank Bring your attention to feel your whole body, especially your your movement of your leg. Okay? And also the anchor of now. You see, anchor of now can also be applied when you walk. Uh, therefore, these are the simple set or technique you, know, you can uh, 
at least give yourself some break, you know, when you feel really stressed and restless. Okay, if there is no more question, let me, uh, is there any question? I swear like I'm a leaf in a breeze <laughs> to do body and breathe uh, mindfulness instead of being still, which uh, for me is a bit difficult due to busy brain. Yeah, it's okay as well. You know, you can like train your body, but sometimes you just enjoy doing that, we become an autopilot. So we have to be very aware. Okay, so if you do it, you know, uh, with full awareness, that is fine. Okay. But sometimes you get busy if you're training your body here and there, isn't it? So what therefore I share with you is dynamic movement. Okay? Or you can do mindful walking. That is also very useful. Okay? Find a way that you know that uh, that you because you know yourself better and you and you know what works better for you. So you can try it out. Okay? And there are a lot of uh, a better type in the chat room. See whether I can. You know, if you like, you know, I strongly encourage you to get this book, you know, by Professor Mark William. Mark William, I write it down, eh? and Danny Penman. Eh? There are two authors, okay? Mark William and Danny Penman. The book is called Mindfulness. Uh, the title is very long. Mindfulness, uh, a practical guide to stay calm in a frantic world, something like that. Eh? I, I'm sure you will be able to find it. Eh? The title contains a word called frantic world. Okay? Eh? You, you may be able to find it. And there is also a gu guided practice on the YouTube eh? by Professor Mark William. Professor Mark William was the former director at Oxford Mindfulness Center. I met him a few times and I think that book is really good. Okay? Because Danny, Danny Hammon who is also a journalist, uh, 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 so the book is very reader friendly and easy to follow. Yeah? So if you want to deepen your mindfulness understanding and practice, I strongly encourage you to get this book. You can order it from MPH online. Yeah? The, by two authors, Mark Williams and Danny Penman, Mindfulness, uh, A Practical Guide of Living Peace in a Frantic World. Yeah? Very long title. Okay? Should we continue? We still have some time. Let's continue. Let's see how it feels like. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, there is a question. Okay, maybe I'll answer the question first. Huh? Some parts of my body is in pain due to certain medical treatment. Practicing mindfulness helps shift my attention away from that area of pain and redirect it to other positive thinking. Okay, it's, it, it's also help, okay, sometimes because due to physical in injury or medical treatment, there is a... So therefore, mindfulness is used for pain management as well. When you feel pain in your body, sometimes it can't help, Some, especially when you experience chronic pain. What you need to do is when you experience pain and be aware of your reaction to the pain. Sometimes we, we, we don't like the pain, you know, we try to judge the pain, we try to run away from the pain. So if you have this attitude, try to relax and accept the pain as it is because you can't run away from pain, eh? isn't it? And then after that, you can switch your attention, of course, to your breath or to the other part of the body and make sure when we how we respond to the pain that is very important eh? if you have a strong aversion take the aversion or strong fear take the fear as an emotion as your object of atten your attention look at the fear look at your emotion in a relaxed way uh, that requires a lot of training so therefore not only in mindfulness practice not only we take the body as an object of our attention we also become aware of our feeling and emotion. Uh, that will be the other parts of mindfulness. I second Dr. Mala, what we try here, pretty close to what I do in my yoga class, a relaxing and nice session overall. Thanks for the user again, just so I think that my webcam broken <laughs> today, okay? Yeah, it's similar to yoga, but it's not entirely same with yoga. Eh? Yoga, of course, it has two parts, physical training, body awareness, and also mental training as well. 
Okay, so there are definitely some similarity. Okay, but mindfulness we also work on the attitude, which is very important part of mindfulness. Okay. Okay, let me continue. It's good to see so many respond. Eh? And let's continue. Mm. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, on breath awareness. So there are lots of benefits of micro breathing. Okay, because the breath can also serve as anchor of now. The breath serves as a link between body and emotion. For example, when we experience a state emotion, eh, the our breathing rate will change. Either become more rapid or become more shed, more slower. Okay. Breath is the link between subconscious and conscious mind. Eh? The, the breath, you know, we can do conscious breathing, or sometimes you just breathe on itself, isn't it? Eh? I think you know better, something like parasympathetic, or the one I'm not expert on that. Eh? And then paying attention to breath can reduce stress level in our body, lower our heart rate, lower blood pressure, reduce depression, and better regulate your body reaction to stress and fatigue. Therefore, I strongly encourage you to do the body awareness practice and also integrate in the breath. Sometimes you can switch between the two, body, breath, wandering mind, body, breath, wandering mind, and coming back again. That is the most basic practice on attention training. When we train more, our mind you know, uh, become more focused and grounded, isn't it? Therefore, become calmer and more stable. That's a basic technique. Eh? Now we go to emotional awareness. How to be aware of our emotion. Eh? For example, stress. Okay? A lot of people, when they feel stress, they become nervous, become unhappy, sometimes become very agitated. Isn't it? So now I would like to ask you a question. When you experience certain emotion, how do you know that how do you know very clearly that you are experiencing this emotion? For example, anger. Because you can't respond to me, so I have to give an answer. Eh? So when we feel angry, eh, many times we can feel that our heart eh, uh, become a bit faster, breathing rate as well. And also the whole body becomes very hot and warm. Sometimes also become very tense, isn't it? So therefore, there is anger, eh? other emotion as well, sadness. We feel that unpleasantness in the body, in the heart area. Therefore, in Malay, we call it sakit hati, it is heart pain eh? <laughs> when we are sad. We, it's not the hati, the liver, or the heart that we are referring to, but it's the emotional aspect of the emotion that we feel when we feel sad, you know, eh? and we can feel that. In fact, we can feel the feeling in our body. And the, therefore, scientists tell us emotions actually express themselves in our body. There is a research done by uh, Finland scientists over 700 uh, subjects. Okay? They recruit uh, people from different regions, including Europe, America, Asia, and so on, and they show them some pictures or video that will be able to arouse some emotion in them and ask them to color, you know, which part of their body they feel the activation or activity the most. Okay, for example, eh, so this is the summary over, you know, uh, 700 or more than 700 of uh, these uh, object uh, uh, participants. Okay, so you will. If you are interested, you can find this paper, eh? 20131. So, as you can see, when we are angry, our whole upper body is like full of fire. Okay? Yellow and red color, color means uh, activation, okay? high activation. Dark color means low activation. Uh, dark, oh no, actually, dark, black color means neutral. Okay? Blue means low energy. Okay? So, you see, when we are angry, Therefore, our whole upper body is like full of energy. We want to punch people, we want to scold people, isn't it? Let's look at when we are depressed. 
So when you are depressed, eh, the whole body will have become sick. But limbs become like no energy, is it? Eh? Like no appetite. Uh, therefore, we become become very blue. <laughs> the mood become very blue. Uh, therefore, that there is this very important message that scientists share with us. There is a very important aspect of aspect of emotion is that the emotion actually express themselves in our body. Put in another way, emotion is very much like a physiological experience. Some uh, sometimes we call it symptoms. We always relate these uh, physical symptoms or physical change to certain emotion. Or in another way, when we certain, when we experience certain emotion, there is also a phys physical change that is taking place. Especially when we feel very stressed, you can see that when you, when we very stressed, you have these uh, frozen shoulders, isn't it? And then your heart or your body become very very tight. So what we can do is to be aware of this expression or manifestation of this emotion in our body. So therefore, for example, when we are stressed, what we could do besides practicing the body awareness, we can also bring our attention to feel the tension in our body. In mindfulness practice, eh? we do not try to run away from unpleasantness. We do not try to run away from physical pain and tension. That is very important. What we do is we connect with this physical aspect of our body, tension, you know, but we look at them, we feel them with what we call kindness and curiosity. Uh, that, this is similarly to what when we have, uh, for example, when, we are, when you get very angry and you, you start to notice that anger starts to arise in you, what you could do is you, you can stop, practice anger of now, and feel your body, feel the anger in your body. Although it's very unpleasant, but you feel it, look at it gently with kindness. It's like a loving mother hugging uh, the crying baby. So we are embracing, we call it embracing your emotion with kindness and curiosity and mindfulness. This is a second aspect of mindfulness, how to what we call work with your emotion, how to look at your emotion with kindness and curiosity. Sometimes we call it using non-judgmental mind. Non-judgmental means we do not treat that anger or negative emotion as something bad. We look at them equally. Happiness and sadness or anger and whatever feeling that you describe, what we need to do is that we acknowledge them we recognize them, we accept them, and we feel them. Uh, that is what we call mindful attitude. Uh, therefore, mindfulness has been applied as a ther uh, therapeutic method. Sometimes we call it radical acceptance, uh, but without using force. It's using kindness. At the same time, we can say softness and also gentleness. Uh, this is what we need to train. That is the more difficult part of mindfulness. But to be able to do so, you need to have some certain stability of the mind. Okay? Therefore, there are two parts. One is attention training. One is attitude. Uh, you can be building uh, a right attitude. Okay? So this will be some theory about mindfulness. So many times, we will we will take the emotion as you. I am very angry. I am very sad. I cannot live any longer. Uh, that is one we, we call it, we personalize or we identify our emotion as you. But in mindfulness, what we do, we change our understanding, you know, or shift our, what we call understanding to a different way. What way? I experience or feel this emotion in my body. I feel stress, I feel the sadness, I feel the anger at this moment in my body and I know very well this emotion arises due to causes and conditions. For example, you just have a fight with your husband. Okay, Of course, you will get angry and you know, all kinds of emotions. So what you do is you're aware that because of this condition, maybe you have an argument 
you don't agree with what he, he or she does, okay? Because of your this argument or your belief, then your feelings or emotion actually come from that. Okay? If you change or you try to respect others, try to think on the other people you know, from their behalf, and then your emotion will actually change as well. So that will be a different topic already. If you still have more time for mindfulness training in future, I will cover that more. Okay, so mindfulness has a lot, uh, what we call uh, uh, many different aspects. So at least I share with you some knowledge, so you know better. You know what is mindfulness. I hope, and also you learn some basic technique that will be useful for you. So the practice for emotional awareness is what we call body scan. The body scan practice is very similar to the body awareness practice that we did uh, earlier. The only difference is in body scan practice, we pay attention to our body, not in a systematic way. Just like we are using a scanner to scan our document in the office, now we use our attention to feel the different parts of our body in a systematic way. Maybe due to time constraint, I will not be able to share uh, to get this uh, this practice. But as I have already shared with you, the resources uh, by Professor Mark William, you can find you know the guided practice of body scan by Professor Mark William on YouTube and also on his website as well. Okay, so that is a question. Amma in Kerala, India, hugs everyone. Is that a kind of mindfulness for spreading kindness? Um, yeah, you see, when we define mindfulness, eh, there is a very specific definition for mindfulness. Although there is a general uh, understanding of what mindfulness is, for example, eh, when, we, uh, when, when we do things wholeheartedly, which means your mind is not somewhere, you are not absent-minded, we can describe that as a mindfulness state okay, in the general term understanding. But there is also a specific definition of mindfulness in which I have just shared with you. Mindfulness consists of attention training and also uh, building of the right attitude on how you work on the emotion. There will be a formal or a definition of mindfulness. Okay. So you say that the ama, uh, you know, hugging everyone is it a step mindfulness for spreading kindness? Uh, if in general term, I would say yes, okay, but not in a specific uh, 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 definition of mindfulness. Okay. So now we still have about twenty minutes. I would like to see whether there are any any question or any sharing I could cover uh, because I would like to. Leave some time for Q and A. I think you will be more beneficial rather than I keep on talking. You know. So there is one question, by Mala. Can we share this practice with students who are facing anxiety and depression? Also, do you conduct session for young adults, teenager facing stress and depression? Uh, okay. Let me share with you. Eh? If the student is interested. Of course, we can always we can always share with them some simple practice that could be very useful for him or her. That's one thing. But the research show if someone who is experiencing severe depression, mindfulness may not be very helpful for them because when your emotion is too strong or overwhelming, okay, sometimes it's not easy for you, like you know, to look at your emotion, you know, uh, on the way that you describe. Okay, so you need a proper or professional guidance on that. Okay, so but if that is not very, you know, but just for relaxing to calm their mind or work with their emotion, mindfulness will be very useful. There is another book by Professor Mark William called A Mindful Way Through Depression. I read from the review, in fact, there are a lot of people who suffer from depression and through doing the practice in the self-help book, it actually helped them a lot. Because especially in Malaysia, mindfulness is still not very popular yet. I mean, it's not easy to find a mindfulness class to attend. <laughs> so yeah, that is the case. Okay. okay, let's see. Is there any question? 
Uh, it's a simple migrant practice well accepted by local students, I mean Malaysia students. I would say yes, if you present it in a professional way, in a scientific way and systematic way. The example I give it just now, like the USM student, I think it was quite well accepted. In our first class, you know, we, we conduct an introduction, we let everyone who is interested to join. Our first class has about 700 participants. After that, we ask the student to register for the course. It's an eight-week training. Okay. At the end, I would say there are about 360 students completed the full training. That is, for me, is quite amazing. And I can see there is also high demand on that. Eh? Because it, although we say we may get, get an e-certificate, but there is no exam, we do not force the student to attend the class or come from voluntary basis. I would say there is a real need in mindfulness training, you know, in emotional intelligent training, to put in that way. Because I call the training EQ mindfulness. People may not understand very well what is mindfulness, but people, you know, roughly uh, uh, can understand what is called EQ or emotional intelligence. So in our training, we are using mindfulness to develop emotional intelligence. Okay, let me answer the question. Can share basic body scan, please. Yeah, just now I just share. Uh, okay, maybe I should guide uh, uh, Dr. Visha. Maybe we should do a few minutes of body scan. I think that we still have some time, isn't it? Okay, let's do it together. Please put your hand on your legs, closing your eyes. As I said, body scan is very similar to body awareness. First, we establish awareness on our whole body. Feeling your soul on the ground, palms on your legs, aware of physical posture. Now we start to do our body scan practice. This time we start from the crown of our head. Bring your attention to the crown of our head. Be aware of your your skull, we'd like to say. Be aware of the whole head. Your forehead. Your both ears. Your nose. Not to imagine, not to visualize, but to feel it. Your lips are touching each other. Your facial expression. Facial skin come into contact with the air and the surrounding. Tension on your neck. Feel your both shoulders. Your whole upper body. Temperatures of the whole upper body or whole body. Upper back, lower back. Any tension or any feelings. It could be no obvious feeling, neutral feeling that is fine, but simply aware of a posture, the whole upper body. The both hands, your palms, your fingers. like a scanner from the top slowly scan from head face neck upper body and bring our attention to our butt top both leg our knee cup The soul, and now your soul to bring shift up our attention. Your cup, 
นี้ไทยเข้าสเอเรียปัดทบแอบโดมันเทสแบ็กอันนี้บุกเองพันชิบะเป็นเช่นตัวเฮเชสกินเอ็กซ์คลาวด์เฮเฮ้ยไม่เอาไปได้ This is a short body scan practice no up down down up You can also practice body scan when you are lying down, especially for those who have sleeping issue, or even though you don't have sleeping issue, you may you know put uh, uh, build up this uh, good habit of bring your attention to the whole body when you lying down on the bed, and then you can start to do body scan and of body awareness of breath, mindfulness of the breath, and then you will have a better sleep. Improve your quality of sleep as well. Okay, so okay, let me answer. There are two questions here. Is multitasking to be avoided? Can we mindfully multitask? This is a very good question. Many times we are doing multitasking, but now you are listening to me and you are watching me, isn't it? This is also a form of multitasking. So the problem is not so much on the multitasking. To speak, uh, the problem is whether you can switch your attention from one thing to the other thing, and you do it, you know, wholeheartedly. So what we are trying to promote now is one time, one business. Okay. So for example, you are attending a class like this. Okay. If you are still thinking of marking paper, so you are marking paper and looking at here. So you can. It's like everything is like half done. Must well you attend to the class, and then one time, one business, and then mark your paper later. So this is what we encourage because a lot of research has been done as well. Multitasking actually do not increase the efficiency of our work. In in fact, it it, it you know uh, our work become less efficient when we do multitasking. You can try it, no harm. Okay. Uh, for example, when we are driving, a lot of time we listening to radio. That is also a form of multitasking. But you can still manage your uh, what we call your journey very well. That is acceptable. So it depends on uh, common sense as well. Huh? You check the quality of the work. If you do multitask and you feel that you are less efficient, then you change a little bit to one time one business. Okay. When you are able to handle it well, sometimes you can't help but to multitask, isn't it? And then you bring your attention there and switch your attention to the other place. Okay. And then you do it well. That's fine. Okay. Last comment. Thank you, Dr. Yeo. This is my second session with you. I have been practicing mindfulness these past few years, and it has helped me a lot, especially when I feel overwhelmed with work. Oh, thank you so much uh, for your sharing. Therefore, I always feel very motivated to share mindfulness. Okay, because I really feel that mindfulness could help a lot of people, and the practice itself is very simple. Many times. When I receive the feedback form for my student, for my chemistry student, many of them also write mindfulness is something that they remember the most, not the chemistry knowledge, because after the exam, you know, you throw the chemistry of knowledge away. Okay, so this is what we call life skill. Okay, a skill that after we practice it and we learn it, it could help us to become more calm, more kind, and more wise. You know, that that is also the purpose. Of our training today, so there is still ten more minutes. I think I would stop here and let Amira to do the some. Maybe you have some conclusion, uh, summary words to share with us, or maybe there are some question or sharing from the ground. 
Amira, over to you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much, Karen. And thank you as well. And thank you as well for really participating. For really participating. I know that sometimes Friday can be a bit difficult. Well, every day is <laughs> because well, our schedules are just so bad. And I know that some people had to because of um, some other commitments. But I really hope that this is something that we can all hopefully continue practicing. Um, as uh, as Dr. Yo said, you know, this is practice. And it's something that five minutes a day, it doesn't take that much time. Um, I won't take much time because I know I'm so I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Yu. And I want to wish everybody a really wonderful week of calm, wisdom, and kindness. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be able to share my goodness with Thank my you. colleagues in the US. And I hope to see you in future. Maybe we have more training sessions, whether it's online or face-to-face. -face. I really hope eh, to see you again in future. Thank you very much for attending uh, this morning workshop. And uh, yeah, and wish you a very happy day you know, and happy weekend ahead. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to remind you. everyone to please kindly have more trainings like this in the future. Thank you, if Dr. You, if you feel that the workshop is uh, helpful for you, you know, please help us to fill up the feedback form and we would like to hear more from you. If the response is good, then Amira, maybe we should try to organize another training in the future. And, uh, and of course, you know, for mindfulness to really take root in you and really be useful for you, it should be a sustainable practice. Therefore, that is the reason why I created the eight week course for the student. You know, because one off training is just like a kick off and introduction. If we just stop here, we could, couldn't really gain uh, much from that. But of course, if you have interest, you can always find the resources like both and also the uh, other resources from YouTube. And then you can still do uh, what we call the practice at home. So I hope everyone shouldn't give up and I hope the, the training is useful for you to cope with uh, your life and work challenges. And therefore, I'm truly glad and be happy to be able to connect with every one of you again. Thank you, Amira, for, Amira, uh, for organizing this uh, workshop today. And goodbye, everyone. Happy day. So sorry. Can we all open our cameras? Group photo. Oh, group photo. Uh, group photo. Yeah. Maybe we should send one of the camera and we have a group photo. Maybe you could share with me later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're just waiting for everyone to turn on the camera. Um, and then I think we can fit everybody with the cameras on one frame. So everyone to also uh, chat and maybe share it to us. I'm going to take a screenshot now. So let's uh, three, two, one, and smile. Okay, and one more. Three, two, one. And smile again. Okay, I think we managed to get everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Yo. Thank you so much, everyone. Remember the feedback form.